beaver fur. And the grizzly beaver fur, as you can see, has a really rough texture to it. That's because they spun it and it was real thick. But Mother Nature built a lot of oil into that fur, so when they had spin it, it spun like cotton candy. So when they had spin it like cotton candy, and it would come out and it had this grizzly texture, it gave them real durability, and they had to adorn the edges and finish the edges was something that had personal significance to them. But what a great hat. The, in, in the United States, when they came up with the 10, gall 10 gallon hats, it was actually a 10 gallon hat. So th these particular hats were more of a dress hat originally, and they turned into uh, an all purpose hat when the West was being settled, as the bowlers and some of the other little fedoras and hats that were being made. Uh, there's companies in Europe that uh, have been making hats over there such as that. Uh, for, for over 400 years. You know, the United States Army does commission all officers, officers and gentlemen, so what better kind of chapeau than a nice gentleman's hat to well, adorn the crown? There was a few Indian scouts that carried those and a few carpet baggers, and you seem to have fallen into a line of work that's in between all that. Well, Captain kind of does what he gots to does. Enjoy the hat and watch out for the arrows. Well, Arrows? What arrows? <laughs> okay. Who is the masked man? <laughs> as a young man, I had no sense of direction, and as, as some don't. And there was a elderly lady in Boise, Idaho, where I was living at the time, who had been making hats for more than 50 years. She made me a couple of really nice hats, and they were $15. I was amazed. It was $15? I said, how could you make a hat for $15, you know? So, well, as time progressed, I stepped, I was having coffee with this family, and they were kind of semi-retired. And one thing led to another. Well, pretty soon the husband got ill, and, and he passed away. And I asked her if she would consider letting an apprentice take over. And this was kind of a one-man operation at the time. Well, she did after a while, and I apprenticed there. And I, I fell in love with the artistic and the creativity that came along with trying to create something that fit each individual's personality with that. Because each hat either has its personality and some of those people take on a whole nother personality in themselves when they start wearing these hats. And they become a whole nother person, maybe somebody that they saw in the movies that they wanted to look like. So what we did was we developed a, a catalog and we have uh, employees and we still create each hat by hand and so We've developed an appetite in the market in, in the United States and outside the United States that is a, a fine quality handcrafted felt hat that gives them a lot of service after the, we're, after the sale is done because it's so important in these days to give them their, their money's worth and to be able to service what you sell. And so we have a, a 9,000 square foot shop with a dozen of us working, lots of trim, we do lots of renovations, we salvage old hats, and then we create a lot of hats for the movie and television industry also. And that's a really a big challenge because sometimes they bring us hats that are uh, truly archaic. And so we always have those challenges. And then the individual challenge of the, the shooters who want to uh, have a certain dress and a dress code and a look to go with them. And then you have to accommodate their body styles, their hair colors, their nose, their shoulders, their ears, all those things to make it fit, make it stay on and make it serviceable. So now we're moving forward into a whole new, the, new era in, in the 21st century and trying to keep up the, the old time sales and service from Rand's Custom Hats into Trail is just an amazing project. This is not our first experience, but it's certainly uh, 25 years later, it's one of the, the largest, a thousand cowboys, maybe more, plus the excitement of the, the vendors and the shoots that go on. It's so uh, talent that is unbelievable that comes together at this time of the year, along with their hats and their costumes. 
We see so much creativity in the hats that go on with these people that they've gone back and they've done their research and they've created a hat that goes perfectly with the costume or the dress that they're trying to obtain. So we get into the derbies, we get into the, the elegance of the ladies' hats with the pheasant feathers, we get into the old beaver fur hats that have shag and texture on them, we get into the pencil rolls, we get into the big brims, the gunfighter looks, the Doc Holliday looks, the Wild Bill Hickok looks, and all of a sudden you have something that you can't find anywhere else in the United States except coming to end of the trail with these people that have driven and come from all the United States. They've flown in, they've come in their motor homes, and if you want to have a great experience, the end of the trail is some place that you'll see something you can't see anywhere else. I, lo I love these kind of foo-foo, funky hats. You know, they're fun. They make me shoot better, because they look better. <laughs> With all the rain around here, my hat's a bit tight. But not to worry, Rich Rand's going to make me a new cowboy hat. The tools of the hat trade are very unique. Can you explain the process of making a hat from scratch? Well, tequila in its simplest form, the fur is, is a, a raw piece of material that is, the fur felt itself is just hair that's spun like cotton candy. And that cotton candy then is, a, is a, a raw woven piece of material that starts out, that's how the beginnings of the felt hat is. We use the raw fur and we have it spun by a furrier and then it's spun into a cone that we use and the cones itself, as they're put in hot and cold boiling water, they shrink into a manageable piece of material that we can make a hat out of and make the crown and the brim out of. So what we're using is a pure piece of fur in its finest form and it can be bleached or not bleached, it can be dyed or not dyed. This is an undyed piece of material. And the, the hair itself starts right from the hair of what Mother Nature has produced for us in its rawest form. Uh, the, none, of the, none of the fur is wasted. You can use cut hairs, guard hairs. You can use all this material in the processing. The finer fur, which is underneath here that has more oil and the softer fur, is used in the finer felt hats. And so when that is spun, it becomes tighter, softer, denser, more repellent. And then the manufacturing process proceeds from there. Once you've measured them in a custom hat, we measure them with a 1800s device that gives us a little template of their head. Well, that template is transformed into a mold, and we can take that mold, and we can actually manipulate that felt by blocking it with old blocks, by stiffening it, by treating it like a fine piece of furniture, and making it over to that customer's head size. Part of that is the implementation of a nice leather sweatband to the exact size so they get proper fit. Because everybody's head is so oddly shaped, even though you think you you don't think of your head as being that way, it's so oddly shaped that it, it's usually long oval, round oval, or irregular oval of some sort. It's not just, if you shaved your head and looked straight down on it, you would be surprised. We're surprised every day. We use antique irons that we've reinvented because there was nobody to make these that gives us the curl and the press to the brim. We use silk linings, we trademark it, we put the customer's name in a leather sweatband, we use raw horsehair products so not to mark the fur when we're using, when we're dusting the fur off and conditioning the hair. We use water repellent in the fur. We take designs and styles from our catalog or from somebody else's catalog, implement their ideas right into the hat, and then it can be regular size, small, medium, or large to fit the individual's profile. We keep the head size on file, the mold on file, and then we can even make a miniature and a replica of that hat for their, for their desk or their mantle.